Folks, welcome back to the College Cod League week number two, day number two. My name is Seymour. Alongside me, Cruz, we are taking over from Shift and Proper for now because we have McMaster Marauders going up against Western University. And Jesse, these two Canadian schools, they're definitely not looking to be friendly with each other. So let's talk about them for a little bit. Coming out of the Northeast B Division, you're looking at these two teams in a very wide open pool. And that's going to be interesting for the remainder of the series. And a lot of implications are going to be on it. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of implications indeed. I mean, only four teams inside of the Northeast Pool B have come into this week at 3-0. and And I mean, that kind of just means that because we got two of them on our screens right now going into this matchup, the two of these teams, one of them is going to come out of this at 4-0, guaranteeing themselves a spot in that top three. And I mean, it is a pretty wide open pool in terms of just like where your top three are really going to be. But I mean, it's starting to really start to solidify itself here more and more as these weeks are going along. And it's kind of a scary thought to be the rest of the division <laughs> inside of this inside of this pool B. hundred percent, it is. Especially when you're looking at McMaster, they did make it to the top forty two, top forty eight. Sorry, last year in the twenty one playoffs for CCL, and you know Western being a new team, they have made moves. We saw them on stream uh, last week, and they're looking good. You know, for a brand new team into the CCL, their debut not too shabby. So the histories, I mean, these two teams look like they could top off the division, like you're saying. Yeah, I mean, they absolutely could. McMaster, they went 6-0 and last week. Very, very good week for themselves. They were able to take a 3-0 victory over Queens and a 3-0 victory over Ontario Tech. And, I mean, one of the one of the matches against Ontario Tech, they had a nice 100-point club in there. They definitely look like an improved roster upon last year. 100%. So let's take a look at this head-to-head -head now between both of these squads and get a little bit of a glimpse on what we're getting between the Marauders versus Western. And when you, we pull up that head-to-head, -head, they are looking to be 3-0 and in the division, matching stats for the season record. When you look over the hard points, Master, they do have the 4-0 edge over Western side. And same with Search and Destroy, it looks like they have the head-to-head -head on their, their end. So the Marauders are looking good right now in this head-to-head. Yeah, so I think that the head-to-head, -head, uh, if we're looking at this correctly, the Mustangs, which are Western, they, uh, they, they come into this one with a... A, uh, they they had a disqualification victory in their last uh, in their last series. Uh, team forfeited. They weren't able to make the match. So that's why you see them at three and zero, and with only the three win the three wins inside of hard point. And uh, I believe they're one and one in search and destroy. I don't think that they're zero and one, but you know we can get that one double checked for everything. But I mean, either way, both these teams coming into this one, you can see you clearly have a search and destroy advantage right now for the likes of McMaster. But I think that hard point really could be up in the air for either team. And now, I mean, you look at the head-to-head, -head, you look at these rosters. Let's take a look at our home team, Jesse, the McMaster Marauders. You know, coming into the season, a relatively same roster as the 21 season as well. But this time, you know, bringing Dism into it, and he is looking good. So here we get to look at him, Big Head, Netrix, Dism, and Schneids. Yeah, and I mean, when you look at the rest of this roster, like you said, Dism, he is that he's he's the brand new kid on the block. But when you're looking at the rest of this team, I mean, you have Big Head here who really didn't play too much last season. He only played in seven maps. He had a rough seven maps as well. So a very tiny sample size. He could have just played against a couple very tough teams. But yeah. I mean, he's back in the main roster, back in that OBJ Slayer role. He needs to really be popping off here for this team. When we look across the pond at their fellow Canadians against the table, their weight team, Western Esports. Let's take a look at this. Like we said, like we stated prior to this and the week before, brand new roster into the CCL season, but they're looking impressive. And I liked what I saw last week, specifically out of my guy CJ right there at the top, following the cast, Mojo, Ion Shady, V Richie. This is a nasty team to go up against right now in this division. I love that you call out CJ because CJ for me on this team, after watching that match last week, CJ looks like he is going to be the X factor on this team. He dropped 46 in a Bacaj hard point last week, 40 in a Tuscan hard point. Those are typical numbers right there. And he has been playing very, very well for this team, being that leader, being that slayer. And I mean, he's going to need to keep it up here against a very good McMaster team. And it, a matchup, Jesse, a best of five wouldn't be solidified unless we take a look at those maps and modes to be exact. I mean, Take a look at the series. I mean, we got a little bit of a look at it in the break screen, but now we get to take a look and break things down. We got a double dose of Bokaj to open things up here on the hard point and the search. Moving over to Gavitu for that map number three. Definitely going to be seeing that one. But if this goes to distance, we're going to close it out with a double dose of Berlin. So we got two Bokajs, two Berlins, and a Gavitu to split the odds. 
Well, all I can say is that our first two maps are going to be fast and uh, fast and furious. If I'm being completely <laughs> honest here, like you know that the Bakasha hard point, it's going to be extremely quick. I mean, the the, the the hard point. We're not talking about the search and destroy. We're talking <laughs> about the hard point. It's going to be fast. It's going to be really, really chaotic. We see it happen all the time here. And you got to think that on a map like this, CJ should be shining. Like we saw, 46 kills in the Bakaj in his first week roster. But I think we do need to talk a little bit here as well, Colin. We need to talk about the keys to victory for these teams. And I mean, when you're looking at Western, they have been very, very rough in search and destroy to start this season off here so far. So if you're McMaster, I think winning your your hard points out as you normally would, but really, if you can take advantage of Western's poor search and destroy, this should be a pretty easy series for them to be able to take. Should be indeed, Jesse. You highlighted fast and furious on Bokaj, but it's not about family raid now. It's about taking down your opponents inside the cage. So as we look through this, as we look through the map number one, you guys know what the deal is. is of the fundamentals slay out like your life depends on it make sure you can just pick up that scrap time on board with cj man of the hour right now for western already taking out netrix is going to cross him off the board mojo going to work his way around shutdown as well nice two down from netrix able to maybe get marauders into this hill so far but in fact western over the first ones to put this it's looking like mcmaster are just trying to flip the spawns right away yeah, they, uh, they they were, and they absolutely do. And they they get onto the left side of the map exactly where they want to start this off. And you can see now they're going to start to try to make their way over towards this hill. But another very good kill for Mojo. It's going to keep West, uh, keep McMaster off of the hill for the time being. And Western, they can try to start rack up a little bit of time here. They've already got 10 seconds to their name. There's still 15 seconds left to go on here. But I'd be very surprised if we see McMaster try to challenge this hill with holding down the spawns for the new hill. That's what I... Some solid time right off the bat, but... Three seconds, and we are going to be heading down to the field. Zuzi catching that rotation as well. Holding things down in the back as we look at this break now from Marauders. Starting to pick up pace as Western having a great start to this Bokash so far. And it looks like McMaster are going to be taking a long way around, trying to get to this hill. But it's the kills going the way of Western now slaying out as they can. And then by the flip comes through, Netrix will be in the back. Find Zuzi. This might be the start to the collapse here. CJ is going to catch him. Still trades back and forth, but it's all right in the kill feed right now. McMaster finally getting their feet in, but for how long? Because Shady, nice kill to keep them out. Schneid's trying to pick up a bit, bit of time. Still 30 seconds, plenty of time to fight for right now. But inside this battlefield of Bokash, it's the nades now that you have to worry about. CJ is going to find one mojo. His second Ion is going to get shut down from Western for this attack. And while this is happening, this last 17 seconds is what McMaster really want to lock down, Jesse. I mean, McMaster through the middle of that, I mean, they kind of get a little bit blessed with the spawn on the left side, but they're not going to complain about that. They will take that tin spawn all day long, be able to get into the back of this. But also, if you're Western, that's not the worst case scenario. There was around 30 seconds left in the hill once the full break came on through. Definitely. So you got the majority of the time off the rip, and then you also get the rotation now over towards this new hill. It's exactly what Western wants, because this is a hill where you can absolutely lock a lot of time down with the right setup, and their setup is looking very, very clean right now. You get Shady from the back, but he's going to lock down too. It's a little bit easier on the inside to deal with things, but Dism, the main slayer right now for McMaster, is going to break on in for the moment's time. Mojo on the flank. The pinch is going to be good and saps the second, but doesn't finish his kill. You got to finish your food, man. You can't just be playing with him like that. Looking for the backup. Zuzi catches him reloading. Still going to fall. Three kills go the way of McMaster. The break. Still in for the Kadeshian, but finally, Schneid's going to pick up Ion. It's going to give some time to the Marauders now. And you look at these spawns for Western Jesse. They're going to be in the back. You have to be careful if you're Western. You don't want to get pinned here. What's crazy, if you're looking at this off the start of this game right now, is Western's actually being pretty uh, heavily outslayed at the moment. Nobody on their team positive for the time being here for Western. You expect to see CJ pick it up a little bit here after what we've seen from him last week coming into these matches, but not the greatest start, but because they're controlling the spawns, because they're doing such a good job of holding on to early time on these hills, this is why you're seeing them get off to this little bit of a lead here, but you got to think if the slaying stays in the favor of McMaster, it's only a matter of time before these guys can take the lead back. I mean, it's, it's Bokash. You just, you just go off spawn. Just keep going. Just keep running into the hill as much as you can to contest it. And did so maybe finding a few kills to just split the odds. Like you say, that heavy slaying, eventually, it's going to catch up to you. So if you're Western, you really need to pick things up in that end. You don't want to fall out of hand so early into the cage. Shady tries to get in. Going to be shut down by Netrix holding the angle. The Kadesh is going to be there. CJ for the pinch. The break from Wester is starting to unfold. But Dism now to split the odds. It's going to be three the way of McMaster. Eye on the last one alive in the back. Closest one to the hill. Finds one. Looks for the second. Great break from Shady. It's going to be two quick kills for the last 17 seconds to fight for right now. And McMaster, all well, they want this so far. See, it looks like they're going to take another swing at this. Ion with the sidearm. Good for one, but one's about it. It's going to be up to Zuzi to hold off on the rest of them for the last six seconds. But right now, it doesn't look like, like either team 
really going to walk away with most of it. Uh, and just as you thought that McMaster was starting to bring their way back into this game, and yes, they get a 10-second lead here, but look at the spawns for the new hill. Look who's going to be here first. This absolutely can turn into a money hill for Western if they get the right setup, and they've got a player down inside the hill. You've got Shady in the back watching over, but Shady's going to fall, and the rest of the setup, it could absolutely fall apart at the seams here, but you will get a few kills coming in. They can absolutely stabilize this out, but, I mean, once you find those two front kills, now this gets a lot easier for McMaster now to be able to break into this hill. Yeah, Shady's not looking too slim right now with the presence he's got on the board. He's got a pretty big presence right now for the team. Stun from Schneid's, you know, CJ's going to be in the back there, so going to be keeping a field eye onto that one as the high ground. Shady looking to get into the hill. Schneid's ran from above, but the backup Zuzi shuts him down. Now it's time for Western. It's going to be big, big head now trying to break on in. Shady's doing a great job at holding it down, but finally break's going to be out and not a lot of time on the P5, which you don't see very often. Usually this is a pretty one-sided hill. Yeah, that is, it's very, very true. But I mean, the fact that this is a 10 second game at the moment with the big slain advantage that you're seeing on the legs of McMaster. I mean, if you're Western, you'll take this all day long. You're right back into this game. You don't really, you're not really too far behind to the point where you can't bring your way back. And we, we've seen in Call of Duty history where you can get outslayed and you can win hard points. It's a lot harder said than done to do it on a map like Bacage, though. And you're seeing exactly why. McMaster, they get a full four down wipe. They can reinforce, get back inside of this hill. You've got Western spawning all the way out on the right hand side. This is a free 10 seconds after that four man wipe. And now McMaster, they're starting to build this lead up. They're starting to go. Dism has, a, has the five spree. He gets the clock. Bomb. This absolutely could start to get out of hand here now for Western. Is it for the break? 20 and 14. A lot of engagements here for that main slayer. Like you expect from the Marauders here. The new kid on the block, CJ, for the trade. Three go the way to Western. Nobody getting a more most time here. It's just the last little bit that Western just keep picking up, like you say, keeping them 10 points away from McMaster. They can start slaying out. That's gonna be a big place. I'm looking at Mojo. 9 and 17. Not the start that you want here in both gosh. You can pick things up. You might look at Zuzi working for the back end. 19 and 17, having quite the game right now in this form. Trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dizum. Finds the opening. That's four down. No snaps to the side. It's information paralysis. Doesn't know who to shoot at. And West are getting some good time right now. It looks like they're going to tie things up here inside the hill or get absolutely as close as they can. But Dizum's going to invest this shriek in. Wonder what they're going to get from that one. Tags up one. Can they finish off that player shady on the outside? Not just yet. It's going to be a contention for now. Here comes the break. Zuzi leading the charge. Schneid's trying to stay alive in the back line, but Western did a great job at just denying McMaster of time, Jesse. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that streak usage. There was only 40 seconds left on that hill when they decided to invest the streak, and you really didn't have very many players around the hill where you could really follow the streak up because, I mean, with Fortified right now, that glide bomb is not going to get you a kill at the moment. So you really need to make sure you have players around the hill so that they can follow up on your streaks, get a couple of tags in, finish off those kills, make your lives a lot easier. And Western, they're absolutely bringing themselves right back into this game. A 10-second lead now going in their favor as we head over towards Grandma's Hill. You do have McMaster back inside the hill. They do hold on to the good spawns. And actually, a split spawn comes in here. So you even get a player spawning in, coming out from behind. And with all the positioning from McMaster, you're going to see Western spawn out on the far left-hand side of the map and they're going to have to run. It's going to take them 15 seconds before they can get right back into this hill. I mean, you say it's only a matter of time before Marauders start to take their lead with them out there out slaying. Well, maybe it's only a matter of time before Western starts getting to the slaying as well. So you start to see CJ. Finds two in a row. Mojo, Luna, soak up as much time as you can. Is player number six is going to get the wraparound. Finds the better of Mojo. Dism locks down two. Can't find the third. It's Shady. Pick him up. Sidearm's good as well. This is time that McMaster really need right now. Schneid's watching the cross. is good for two. Mojo on the inside for the possession for the 17 seconds. Trades out for his teammate Zuzi. Trying to hold presence into the sale for the cash in. But McMaster slaying out. They're going to clear out that last player and look to collect the rest of this time. I mean, when you've got two teams both undefeated in hard point at the moment, I think this is exactly what you expect to see out of these two. A 10-point game still. Slaying doesn't seem to really be a factor inside of this Bokash hard point because we're still within seconds of each other. You've got Western back inside the hill. you got to expect at some point they're going to start to pick it up on the Slain. But again, another four-man kill for the McMaster Marauders. They can get right back into this hill, start to build this lead up. But it feels like every time one of these teams gets a little bit of a lead, the other team just answers back with a bunch of kills and a four down of their own exactly like we just seen and western gets back in the hill they can bring this game back into their favor shady just had the nicest thoughts for a little bit big hands getting it behind just on the time for now this is easy for the trade still a lot of white in the kill feed jesse and this is exactly what you want if you're a western fan right now kills going the way he's gonna flip that lead right now momentarily schneids trying to work some break right now shady's gonna shut him down big head gets in for the contestant but again shut down Inside this barn, it's been mostly Western winning the fight here. And Zuzi making the heads-up play to get out of the barn. 
Back in, find the kill. Now to try to work your magic the other way down that finds the glide bomb. That's gonna be huge. We're heading to the P5. Yeah, glide bombs on P5. Absolutely something you want here for this hill. If you don't have the hill, it's great to help break. If you are in control of the hill, it's great to get information on where the other team is spawning and where you can really drop it on them to weaken them as they're trying to push into these hills. And McMaster, they have got a great setup going for themselves right now into this hill. Schneids is able to find another two-piece. Shady's going to push out. He's going to get dropped as well. This is looking like probably the best setup that we've seen for a hill so far in this map. Near even. Light bomb's going to be called in. Suzy. Gonna open things up for his teammates. CJ gonna find Tism. Little trade's coming through. Glad Bomb is gonna take down Big Head. So that's the opening that Western we're looking for. Now time to collapse. Trace gonna be tagged down low. Still snaps on Shady. What a kill for Trace to get a big one now to flip the, the lead back to McMaster for this hill to get right back in. And look at that kill feed. It's all Marauders right now. Five in a row for Schneids. It is gonna lock down that Glad Bomb for themselves. And this is just good time for them to get the biggest lead we've seen in so long. And when you see that glide bomb come in, like it was a good glide bomb usage. Western, they just weren't able to follow it up with the kills to get themselves inside of that hill. McMaster all came off spawn. They were able to reinforce quickly because they had those close spawns, made their lives a lot easier in terms of trying to break back into this. But I mean, Western's not out of this. They are fighting their way back into this and still, I mean, it's still heavily, heavily getting out slayed. Something that we cannot start uh, stop harping on here in this map at the moment because you've got three players on the likes of McMaster's. Dism's 33 and 25. Schneid's is 30 and 20. 29 and 22 is Netrix. Like, all playing very, very oh, well, nice. and yet still somehow we're at a tie game. Oh, I saw CJ and Zuzi right now having a ball right now in Bokash from the top rope. Shady's going to find Netrix. Is going to keep their presence into the hill to flip this lead. Shady's trying to finesse his life. Tism for the trade. Still fighting for their life right now. Scrapping for the Shras. That is this hill number one. Schneid's trying to dance around a little bit awkward right now. Sidearm's going to take care of Mojo. See Wester set up right now for the preferred spawns going into this hill too, but still the kill's gonna come through. Schneid's gonna call in the glide bomb now, getting the information for Marauders to set up this push. It's gonna land right onto Shady, but Fortify's gonna come into the action, not take him down. Shady's gonna get another chance at this big head. Take him through Western in the hill right now, but keep your eyes on the clock, Jesse. We only got 30 seconds. Didn't even notice the clock. That's something I'm normally so good at paying attention to here, especially on Bakaj. But this is that one map where you, the clock can end up being against you more often than not. And right now, if you're Western, I think you just try to keep slaying around the hill, keep McMaster off the hill, and just don't touch it yourself because you can put it away here. Again, 10 seconds here. Riders, they need to slay out. Schneid's going to cut down Zozi. Zuzi is going to make them pick things up for right now. Here comes Western. Having trouble getting to this hill. Shady's going to find the opening. Shot down by Big Head now. 194 to 202. 8.7 seconds. Mojo in for the second, but not going to be able to shut things down for long enough. It's looking like this could be a lead change. Zuzi from the side is going to find one. Goes to find the other one right around it. Trying to finish his life. It's going to be Schneid's, but that's a shutdown right now. Six seconds left. And it's looking like we're going to Granny's, but it's their time right now. Dism has to go big. Mojo's going to shut him down. He's going to get in the hill. All they need to do is get out right now, Jesse. That's going to be it. In for the contention, you have to be careful near the Marauders because right now, Western, why are you even on the hill? They're going to hop off and Western are going to take Bokash. I mean, I just need to count out after this game how badly they were outslayed in that match to be able to come out and take that map number one. Western absolutely showing, uh, showing hard point. Just so much prowess there in that map. Just the way that they're able to not slay out, not be leading in the slaying factor by any means in this game. I think they only had one player who was positive in Zuzi at 39 and 34. Maybe another player was sitting at even. But, like, the fact that you're able to come out and you're able to take map number one on a Bokaj, which is an extremely slaying heavy map, not slay out, win the map still, but also don't even hit 250 to win the map. That's how contest heavy that whole map was. Absolutely crazy stuff coming in there. Absolutely Bonkers coming out of Western. I mean, last week it was the CJ show. I don't know who Zuzi is or where they came from. They weren't on the roster list when we were looking at it. They were yeah. there last week. Yeah, we but were looking Zuzi at Virtue coming in and we're like, who's <laughs> Zuzi? But welcome to the team. Thanks for yeah. leading and slaying today. I, I, I did not expect that out of Western whatsoever. I mean, Marauders, they look good in the hard point, but if we take a look right now at this, you can see how much they outslayed on Edism. 40 and 32 and the rest of his team dropping at least 30 where you look at the side of western like you called out it was zuzi and it was cj doing their best to slay out for their team and then you had mojo collecting that objective while shady just locks down those spawns i mean they had the fundamentals down and i guess they just they just did it right yeah i mean look at the 
look at the kills per hill. I think that's a big stat to look at right now. You get three out of both CJ and Zuzi. And then I and Shady and Mojo are both sitting at like 1.5 and 1.9. That is not a lot of kills per hill. Like you're averaging one kill per 60 seconds at that point for Mojo. And that is, you just, it, you need to be a little bit better there. You're not going to be able to rely every game on not outslaying the other team to be able to win hard points because it just does not work like that. They kind of get lucky here in this map number one. And uh, you know what? I got to think that if they were not on Bakaj and they were on another map where you're spawning out across the map yes. and very, very far away consistently from the new spawns, you got to think that that map was probably a pretty easy McMaster win. It was, but when you look at the keys to victory, that's where Western are kind of looking at this like, hey, we, we took the hard point and now Search and Destroy, you know, might not be the best game mode for us, but now that we took that first Bokash and we're heading into a Bokash Search and Destroy, kind of takes a little bit of weight off their shoulder. Yeah, it does. It does take a little bit of weight. You get that first map win and... I mean, I'm still a little worried for them because now you have to kind of take two more hard points, but you get your shot at search and destroy. Now you're two and one or one and two on the year for Western. It has not been your best mode, but you know what? You're only going to get better by playing these modes more and more as the season goes along. And also, I mean, once, once control comes in, then you don't have that third hard point to fall back on as well. So this is a big game for them. They need to win this. They need to take all three hard points, I think, if they want to take this series because McMaster's search and destroy has looked phenomenal so far this season. Oh, yeah, it has. And I mean, you're not going to get away with hardcore forever. Like you say, control should be coming in next week. So you need to kind of tighten things up soon when it comes to the objective game modes. And the fact that we're looking at Bokash next, I, that might be a little bit of a saving grace for them because it know, could be. Maybe they're just down a clown in the cage, you know, whatever. It's just Bokash sometimes is it's good for certain teams who just like that fast paced variety that it seems to give and in search and destroy when you're looking at some of the strats that come through even for the attackers i mean you can get into granny so fast on the attacking side this could be western's i guess trojan horse into the series I re it really really could be their trojan horse you're not wrong i think the i think the thing for western coming into this one though that i'm a little bit worried about going up against mcmaster especially because mcmaster is a great s d team just the fact of how badly they were outslayed in that map number one. Yeah. You got to think that you can't get away with that in search and destroy. You only get one life per one life per round. So if you lose those four lives, you're out of that round. So, I mean, playing your life is going to be very, very important for these Western players. You can't just keep throwing your bodies at the hills because you only get the one respawn. You need to make sure you're, you're using every single life to the full advantage here in search. Well, folks. I want to hear what you think as well and don't forget to tune into college cod bravo going on right now in the secondary stream there's so much ccl action to be had and if you're here supporting western or mcmaster it's here to chat so show some school spirit because after all i mean this is the college cod league i want to see it happen hashtag ccl 2022 show you some school pride rally behind your team Let's see if you can get that spirit energy going for each of them. McMaster might have lost out on Bocage Hardpoint, but it was a close one. Now you're looking at Search and Destroy to see if they can answer back. And this absolutely needs to be a must-win map at the moment here for McMaster, I think, as well. Just from how you, you were able to outslay in that map, number one, but you lose it. So I think if you go into the Search and Destroy and you go down 2-0 with two more hard points to go against Western, who's clearly very good at uh, at hard point, they can win maps without outslaying you. Imagine if they do start to pick up the slaying in those maps two and three. This is absolutely a must-win map here for the likes of McMaster. And Zuzi, he's going to be the first player in here very, very quickly. Gets right inside the site. And I mean, they're not even looking oh. to plant this bomb. They're just looking to go fast and hard. Look at that. Zuzi leads the way. CJ just played coy. Ion's going to double down onto Netrix, who's trying to finesse their live dism looks like he spotted them out but you gotta be careful because right now granny's it's in residence of the western esports squad shine's gonna answer back on azuzi so 3v2 right now jesse Monte mojo a little bit of shots in but not able to finish it out 40 in the pocket Hit them behind mojo's gonna be there find the bomb not expecting shady to be back there so it's all gonna be up to this last player goes for the beat down but it's not gonna be there this home jumping away from the punches now shady in a 1v1 20 seconds left and I love this play to go on the outside, but oh no, player number eight spots them. Dism, is there even any time to make a play right now? You're either going to have to take the kill, get the bomb, tries to raid the play, but Shady's there and he's ready. It's a great heads up play from Shady just to get away with his life, run around. Don't allow the player to really be able to get that final kill. If he gets shot one more time in the back there, he's probably dead. But, you know, it does not matter. Once you win the round, he gets away with his life just by the hair.
Very, very tight round there. I think also if you're Western, you probably could – or sorry, if you're McMaster, you probably could have throw, closed that round out a little bit quicker for yourself. So if Schneid doesn't re-challenge up in the top there, stays alive, but he just re-challenges on the bomb immediately. If he make, maybe just backs up, they get that final kill from Schneid's up top, it's a different round. You can absolutely pull that one off. But nonetheless, Eek-a-boo. Shady on four in a row to start this game off, already looking for that glide bomb. Big head George now. No head George. To that first blood. Oh, how do you even get into the site if you're Marauders? I mean, they are snuffed out with how fast Western got into that B site or into the A site. I mean, Marauders, they at least need to find a few kills before they're going to step foot into Granny's. And player number eight, Dism, hasn't even made their move on the extension. It's up to these two players to make a move, be proactive here. Zuzi gets baited. Mojo for the trade, waiting there. Shady to double down on a Schneid's out. Dism scratching his head. He doesn't even know what to do right now, Jesse. He's been questioning pretty indecisive in this whole round and now last alive gonna have to turn up real big next 40 seconds it's hard once you're on offense and you decide that you want to hit towards that ace site mojo should get these shots in here this will stay alive for now does end up falling to the pistol but yeah it's really really hard in those rounds once you get that big man advantage and you're sorry once you're in that man disadvantage on offense and you have zero map control you're pretty much just stuck in your spawn need to push into a line of sight that's definitely being watched by somebody on the defense very very tough to be able to pull that one off they just unfortunately got stuck into that situation and the worst part of it all is that you give shady streaks as well so two rounds in you've got a 2-0 lead for western and you have streaks on their side i would honestly be surprised if we don't see them hit out maybe towards this b site right off the rip here and utilize that streak early on here in this game try to bury mcmaster Shady, Louis for sixth. Zuzi on site is going to get the better of tricks now. Good information, and there's just flooding on in here. McMaster, they don't even know how to hold on to things. Bomb's going to go down. Nobody answer back just yet for the Marauders. Mojo to double down onto Schneid's working his dang right now inside Granny's. Player number five, Shady, finds that strafing run as well, leaving Dism once again last alive in a 1v4. Is able to find the first, but now on the run to hide, hopefully play their life, do something to pull this round back or. A little bit of momentum. He's going to spot this. Tries to finesse his way back into Zuzi, but Zuzi's been shooting a little bit different right now, Jesse, and he's not going to let that slip. Well, we got a 3 and 0 SD team going up against a 1 and 2 SD team. You thought it might go the opposite way here, but maybe Pakaj is exactly the answer Western needs to their search and destroy struggles that we've seen so far here in this season. Because, I mean, what they're doing so well right now on their offenses is. They're just playing their numbers. They play, they stack two SMGs. They push straight inside of the A site. And you have a player sit over and watch, uh, just try to tag the player up that sits in behind the bomb site. I'd be very surprised if we see McMaster the next time on defense, send a player, sit him in behind that A site and just leave him there as a sitting duck because clearly the Western's coming. They want to take control of that site as quickly as possible. And they've been doing it so well here in this round. Finally, McMaster gets a first blood. They actually get a first two oh. in the round and a great, great round here for them so far. Shady's on six in a row, but I mean, a 1v4, I think. I think this one would be pretty hard to get here in this round you just meet fire with fire and it looks like marauders right now overwhelming western in this round finally in a good chance to pull this back shady six in a row but that is where your streak ends mcmaster what a way to open up that round i mean just overwhelming the b site finding that first blood they actually find two right off the rip and that just puts Western in such a weird position where they feel like they have to take some gunfights. They have to be proactive, and it's just not the case when you're already two down so early. I think the big thing here as well for McMaster, I think you need Schneids to step up. We've seen him multiple times this season drop big numbers inside of Search and Destroys, and he has just not been that player here so far today, sitting at two and three in this SD. You need him to pick it up a little bit here, be that leader for this team. Yes, they do finally get a round win there. It's all good and dandy, but you still need to deal with full streaks on the likes of Ion. And Big Head, he will get another first blood here, so that's big, but he gets traded immediately, isn't able to play his life. Drakes, oh, oh, he didn't hit the jump. That would have been so big. We're looking at a player from Western, still preoccupied into the bar, and Netrix might be able to get some good timing right here. There it is, Shady. Shots in the back, and it's going to be up to Zuzi now, 1v3. 60 seconds to work with plenty of time to play this slow. You have the slide he did, but Truck's still going to get worked on that. Zuzi, 5-3. and three. Well, That was a great Bokaj map one, but looking to keep it up in number two as well. Take a look at the mini-map now. Look at how far McMaster are sitting with that bar bomb down. I'm sure they know that, though, with the way they're rotating here. Schneid's going to walk right into it, takes the wide swing, and if he didn't get that, there was a partner 
to finish that out. It's good for McMaster now. They're second on the board. I love how McMaster plays the later portions of that round. I mean, once you get into that one versus three and then you lose one of your teammates, one versus two at that point, they just decide, hey, you know what? Let's just play together. We'll play this trade out. It's just it's just simple S&D strategy at that point. It's way easier to win a gunfight two-on-one than it is to take a bunch of individual one-on-one -on -one gunfights, keep giving the other team chances to come back and back and back into this into this game here. And I mean, McMaster, they're doing exactly what they need to do to start to bring their way back. And I, I highlighted a player on McMaster earlier on who we normally expect to see much, much better. It's time to do the same thing for Western. CJ starting 0-4, definitely not what you expect to see off the start. Still in the lead. Still a chance to keep that comfort there. Zuzi almost getting shots on the second. Shrix has to be careful. Looks like he's going to wrap back around 2v2. Western actually quite disconnected. CJ trying to work something in the back line for maybe potential flank but hasn't been able to spot any information as well two separate 1v1s on each field schneid's gonna spot cj kind of trapped right now as schneid's nose he's got him dead to right cj hello goodbye 2v1 making a 2v9 make master tie us up well just as quickly as we said that western was looking very very good in searches for you get three fantastic rounds in a row at a western where they find that first blood and they just turn that first blood into round wins and it's been the last three rounds it's been so easy for them they get that blood they play together they close the round out exactly what you like to see inside a search and destroy and now western you need to find a way to answer this they've been they found your counter and all search and destroy is it's moves and counter moves it's like a game of chess now you need to find your counter moves here because clearly mcmaster they figured out what you want to do off the start and we're seeing a different hit now coming in from western the new move coming through they're going to hit over towards this b site they want to hit middle map but look at metrics he might just be able to get into an annoying spot here and shut this push down completely we spotted him cj all in six man you're one point away from going to the That's agency huge. when shady uses the, the glide bomb yeah you're right it is huge is he gonna find dizzle man look at where zuzi's position that could be bombed down zuzi's gonna find schneids and mojo's gonna take that bomb all the way to the a side i love this play from western jesse because big master they have no idea where this play is happening i don't think mojo knows where this play is happening right now either though because he's gonna wrap this bomb back over towards b and you're not wrong though mcmaster is absolutely being kept guessing mojo should be able to get this bomb down oh the only issue i see with this plant right now is that you have two submachine guns on the likes of western it's gonna be very hard to hold down some of these long lanes of sight Zuzi hasn't been missing just yet, and Mojo is able to escape as well. So both these players now kind of tightening things. It's this close range engagement that Big Head is gonna have to take. I don't know if he spots Mojo there. No, no way he does. So no, he doesn't have to see him. He's gonna slide right across. Hello, two players there. It is already occupied. This is the residence of Western Esports in the outskirts of the map. That tricks now two v one. Nineteen seconds left to play with. Wraps around, finds nobody's home. Oh, that's it, so unfortunate. Absolutely rooted on the other side. Zuzi, 1v1 now for Natrix to clutch up. But there's just no time right now. You know that Western Mojo, in fact, just does not have to peek this until the time is right. And here he comes flying right from the top ropes. I love the opening of that round there from Western. What they do off the top, they drop in a glide bomb. And not only does the glide bomb find kills, but what it does is it forces all of the Western players that were in and, or sorry, all the McMaster players that were in and around the hill and outside. They all have to go and hide inside Grandma as it opens that site up completely for them to get full control of the backside of the McMaster base. And once they do that, it makes the round that much easier for them to be able to close it out. You saw McMaster, they had to push all the way through. They had to clear out the bottom right hand, sand, uh, the bottom right hand side of the map and it just made it that much easier to close the round out there for uh, the likes of Western. And now McMaster looks like they want to get fast up towards middle oh, of the map. Oh, CJ! 07 in check, guys. Come on. Let's see it. Zuzi goes down as well. Western falling to pieces right now in Granny's. That track's going to be kind of in a very awkward situation. And Mojo's going to actually even us up, Jesse. So we're it's things so starting unneeded. off pretty poorly. Yeah, Bomb is down. And now we're into 2v2. And Shady actually might be able to get some good time here on Schneid's. And he does. 2v1. Dism lasts alive once more. Make something happen, and he is so far away from this bomb. It is going to find Shady. Mojo now knows exactly where he is. So we might actually be able to read this play in the back, but no. I think Mojo is just trying to take the wide angle on this one, and I, I don't mind that at all. It does him. You can see what he wants to do here because he has the automaton in hand. He wants to keep this this gunfight at a long range here, and I uh, he looks like he just wants to post up towards oh. the back. Actually, going to choose to wrap out. Mojo catches a terrible timing here. If no he checks way. this, what two seconds sooner, he gets to see that bomb should get picked up. But I believe that Mojo, with the way that Vanguard works, should have the information now that bomb has been picked up. Is he going to hear the plant? Oh, he's he does not. not. He does he's not, not going to hear it. the plant. This one's going to get the sound. I don't know if he recovered an MP40, but 
He is going to retreat down into the tunnels. Looking to make the long wrap. Mojo, no way. No way. He's got the mojo. He's got the mojo, Jesse. He's going to stick this one into him. Has no idea. That's the problem when you plant bomb and wrap completely off site. I mean, Mojo, it, it could have worked. It absolutely could have worked. But you you just got you got outplayed simply by Mojo in the end of that round there. You get, he just hops right on the bomb, closes the round out there for Western, puts them back up in a 5-3 lead. And it, I mean, if this game has any it patterns, like to continue on here in this game, we've seen three to Western, three to McMaster, now two back to Western. Could we see the third in a row once again close this game out here? It looks like we're going back towards that classic A hit we've seen off the rip. But Netrix, huge first blood there on a CJ. 0-8 to start this game. Ooh, they're still in the lead, though, so... Teammates have been turning up for him. Mojo is not even going to check the corner. He knows he's getting this bomb down. He needs to get this bomb down with the help of Zuzi. On the exit, Netrix is going to be cleared at the top. That's going to even us up now for this retake. Western, how are they going to make... Or McMaster, how are they going to make this retake happen? It does look like player number seven, Shines, is going to pick things up and set this up with a strafing run. Finds absolutely nothing. Mojo's going to have an exit, but now he's last alive to put this away. 24 seconds, 1v3. McMaster, they just need to hop this and watch over the player defusing. Big, Head, Big Head's going to hop it. Mojo gets caught. Dism's going to shut him down, and Marauders stay alive. Yeah, that uh, that's a big, big play from Schneids there. What what happens is once he pushes through the back of the opposing team's spawn, it just completely makes all the players on Western have to turn around, look opposite ways. They can't keep watching exactly where they want to watch to hold on to the end of that round. They're able to close it out because of that. It makes their lives a lot, lot easier there in that round to be able to take that retake, get the bomb, get it defused. I love what they do once they get the 3v1. They just hop the bomb. You watch over it with your other two players. Complete trust in your team. It's how you will end up winning these maps out. And I mean, once again, Seymour, when you were looking at this, you have a player in 0-8 right now. The rest of the players sitting around even or, you know, basically just over positive here for Western. You got to think, man, if CJ was playing the way that CJ normally plays, like this map would have been over a long time ago. Well, let's see. Chance for redemption. Tucked away in the corner. This is the CJ corner right now. He always plays right here. And I'm sure Marauders, they should know that by now. They're not even going to check it. They're just going to open the door. Look to take control of the B site. It's Western residing inside of Grandma's. With McMaster and Dism going to play in the way they are. I'm sure they want to set up their ARs long. And I don't mind this, uh, this B plant whatsoever if that's the case. The retake, it could come in though. The bomb does get planted. And two kills now go to the way of McMaster. So... The retake that I thought might have come at the start of there. They had players watching perfectly over the top. Three go down. Now you're only going to have Mojo left alive here in a one versus four. And we're going to see around 11. That was perfect. That was perfect out of McMaster. You run it down mid. You bait them into grandmas. You just make sure that all eyes are on the A site. The whole time your team is just wrapping around to B. You know that Dizzo and Schneids have been out of their mind with the automaton. You get that bomb planted and... Who turns up? It's your ARs. It absolutely is. CJ, I hate to keep harping on it, but 0-9, you got to find some value out of your life here in this final round. You can't keep dropping here early on in these games. Western, though, it looks like the B hit that they did so well before. They're going to try to hit it again here off the rip. At least that's where the bomb initially looks like it's heading over towards. The issue is this time you don't have a glide bomb to completely open this site up. Oh, Schneitz. Drop to nine. Barely getting away with life right now. This is one of the first times we've seen Western actually work an early plant towards B. I mean, what Western could do here is they could just kind of make a lot of noise over towards B and bait them coming over there and then make their hit towards A. And it looks like exactly what we're going to see coming in here. Yeah, CJ finally puts himself on the board. It might be the X Factor right now. Dism for the answer. Doesn't expect Zozi to be here, but Dism has the glide bomb. Well, if he stays alive right here, uses that glide bomb for info, might be able to catch somebody in a weird position. Bomb hasn't gone down, and that's exactly where we see. Glide Bomb's going to be pulled. Got to be careful your Western. You don't want to die to this bomb. Oh, he knows the player's in bar, and he is going to get that information. And well, that happens. Finally, the bomb's going to be going down. Two rounds ago, we've seen this exact same retake come in from McMaster. Look at Schneids making his way in the back line once again. Could he be the X Factor here? Shady Detrix opens things up now. 2v3. Zuzi for the answer back now. This is up to these last two players to hold things down on the inside of Granny's. Dism leading the charge, bursting through these doors. 30 seconds to make it happen. Mojo on the outside. I don't know if he saw him. No, he didn't. Dism. 1v2. Zuzi. Last one alive. 
Awesome, a little bit of dance. Works his magic. Schneid's gonna be down 1v1. Dism on the hunt right now to make this happen. Susie knows he has to check this. A little bit awkward. It's gonna be right in his face. Dism, welcome back. 12 and 5. He's gonna clutch up for the Marauders. Oh my god, I would be losing full right now. What an awkward gunfight to close the game out. Both players trying to bust through the door at the same time. But one thing we cannot sit here and not talk about right now is the fact that Dism, who went so big for McMaster in game number one, unfortunately they don't get the win, but finishes game number two on a seven kill spree, wins three rounds straight in a row for McMaster. They were down 5-3. They were down 3-0. They never quit there in that search and destroy. And you're seeing why they are such a good S&D team coming in from that game there is no quit in this team they come back they're able to close it out they tie our series up at one to one wow that was five to four from western with cj zero and eight as well oh nine oh and oh nine I, that is uncharacteristic i mean cj i think you're just trying to make me look bad i mean i talked about you in the after action report i said you got to keep your eyes on him and just make you really me you really right hyped now. him up you yeah, did you, you did hype him up just make me look bad right now come on but, I mean, it's uncharacteristic to see CJ go 1-10 and 10 in the Search and Destroy after the week we saw last week. But this is still an ever-evolving Western Esports. This is still their debut in the CCL. Only week number two. So they got a lot of growing pains right now to see. And as you can see, Search and Destroy just seems to be one of them. I, th I think another thing that we can talk about as well with CJ's struggles right now, it could also be because they do have a sub in playing today. Yes, Suzy is stepping up to the role. He's playing very, very well. But you said it last week when you were casting over these guys. They didn't. They don't have Virichian, who was their who was their fourth last week. Could could end up being the difference here. But I think the one thing, and I, I mean, I don't want to harp on it, but I mean, he had one first blood for his team in that round, which was the the round eleven to open things up there for Western. But CJ had five first deaths there for their team. You just, you just can't you can't let that happen. You can't keep throwing away your life and getting no value out of it because that's how you're going to continuously lose rounds. And you got to think that those were the rounds where McMaster were really able to bring their way back into this game. Well, I mean, this has the potential to go the distance between both of these teams. It very much could be the case. And if that's the case, we are going to have to see some mid-series adjustments come out for a few things. But while these players are going to be taking a break, we are as well be hopping to a break so we'll see you in a second when we come back we got gavit to hard point on the menu we'll see you there welcome back everybody to the ccl mainstream here for week two day two we got western esports and mcmaster marauders going head to head right now tied one apiece after the search and destroy jesse but let's go look at the maps and modes a little bit of a recap of what we got through that take it away what did we just witness here at the hard point and search well, I mean, this has absolutely been one of the closest series we've had on the Alpha stream all season long so far. And we're only two maps in. You've got you've got Western, 213 to 200. Got heavily, heavily, heavily outslayed in that yeah. hard point on Bakaj. And somehow come away with the map. They do go down to the game clock. They come away with a 13-point win. And then you look at that Bakaj. And you know what? It feels like these are two maps where both teams have kind of fumbled the bag so far. I mean, you had Western off to a 3-0 lead in that Bakaj. They get brought back on McMaster, bring it right back. And then another two rounds go straight back to the likes of Western. They get that 5-3 lead. They throw it all away at the end once again. And McMaster is right back into this series. It's a tie up at 1-1. One one. And you got to think if that's how the Mustangs are throwing away some of these games here for the likes of Western. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of obvious as to why their S&D hasn't been the greatest this year. It's something that they absolutely need to improve on as the season goes along. Otherwise, they're going to be in for a rough time as the through the rest of the season. Now, the good thing for them, we're heading to a mode where they're still undefeated in in terms of hard point record. They've been very, very good this season here on this record, on this map. I mean, it's, McMaster needs to find a way to not only outslay, but also win these hard point hills. We got to look at CJ and Susie mimic what we got there especially cj come on man gotta get a better start than that search and destroy last game a lot right of set the needs. I mean, master of zuzi on the inside big head comes around maybe the break early first blood and second mojo to drop as well it's quick three down cj last alive is gonna keep his toe in the board for a little bit of time now it is actually a little bit awkward but schneid's finally gonna catch his number marauder is gonna be early to pick some points up 
So this is what I wonder off the start of this game here. So we saw on Bakaj a heavily outslayed map for McMaster. But the problem with Bakaj is once you die, you spawn up, you're back in the hill within like five, ten seconds, you're right there. Now on a map like Gabutu, where you're going to die, and once you die, you spawn out very far across the map from these next hills. And I think this is why you're already starting to see McMaster come off to a big lead, because they can get into power positions. You can kind of predict more so where these spawns are going to be coming in at. And I think this is going to be a much harder map now for Western people to win. Oh, there's a red him like a book. Pistol's good enough. to start three this in a row. Game, Dism. Hey, eight kills to start off this game. I mean, this is exactly what I would expect from Marauders. The fact that they outslayed is just shining now on a map that's a little bit bigger than Bokash. And he is going to take this power position and he's going to hold it until somebody on Western decides otherwise. But so far, so good. Purely flawless right now from the Marauders. Zuzi finally finds the break in as soon to follow Netrix to trade. Back into it are going to be the Marauders only giving up one point. Here's the strafing run. Why not? I mean, you have it so early. Just use it. Ion, peekaboo. Whoa. Oh, cheeky. Pistol. Cheeky. Uses the pistol from the ladder stall. <laughs> and he's able to find the first one there. But it just does not matter. McMaster already right back in the hill. I think the big thing here, though, if you're looking at this, is Western have at the very least flipped these spawns. So you hold on to the right-hand spawns. You can now set up for West Beach with only 10 seconds left. But actually, you've got players still hitting the old hill for Western here. Nobody's really rotated. So actually, Schneids will be the first player over towards this hill here. And it's for McMaster. Can he stay there, though? Big head on the pinch. Already good for two. Dism gonna invest the glide bomb because once again, why not? Already the game just started. Schneid's gonna find CJ. So far, flaws for the break. Shady, last one alive in the back line to try to keep these spawns influenced. And it does. Zuzi gonna spawn here. Schneid's now gonna pour this one in as well. Three kills go the way. Wester and the Mustangs do have the break for how long? Because here comes the Marauders to brush back on in. Dism's good for two. Natrix still working the flank here. One last player into the hill and. You look at Western right now, the Mustangs are locking down that artillery hard point, but if you see the Marauders have the close spawn here, you have to be careful. You need to get these ARs set up in the power position to watch over things, because if not, that's going to happen. Marauders, they find the kill, and they break in with ease. Yeah, this game is coming very easily to McMaster right now. I mean, you get a little bit of a break there for Western. They're able to get back inside of this hill for the smallest bit of time here. And CJ, he is starting to heat it up a little bit here, but he does end up falling, and time does not go in their favor. Now... I think we could try number two here for Western. You you get the early rotation over towards this new hill, but this time you have all four players here. Everybody's set up over at the radar station. You need to answer back with a big hold here, or you're going to fall out of this game very, very quickly. Mojo, overwhelmed. Big Hat is going to find him with the cross. Western right now with really good setup on this rotation. What could be a money heal? This is much needed time. Shady throws some shots down. Look at this player number four, Zuzi, on the flank is good for one. They close the door right now on Marauder's push, and look how far that is going to be spawning them up all the way back at the last hard point. Zuzi's still playing cutoff to these players, but Big Head, he finds the break on in. Netrix and Schneids have the kills, and he just slips the line right on in to flip things back to the way of the Marauders and Wester right now. This is a big mishap for them, Jesse. This is not what you wanted to have happen. Big Head is okay just sitting here, delaying the time for Wester, and slides out, finally going to be picked up, and it's his time out of the hands of the Mustangs. The thing that I'm liking out of Netrix as well is he's just sitting up in that top in that top area still. He's not allowing anybody to get him out of the sniper's nest, and all he has to do is just chill up there. And uh, when he does that, McMaster is not going to spawn on the other side. You can see Zuzi's going to be putting a ton of focus on getting this player out of that powerful position. Absolutely with step number one here. And Zuzi's on four, so if he can find streaks, this could really be the start to Western starting to bring their way back into this game. But the way that they're about to try to break this hill is not the optimal way. You, you want to push towards the top side of the map so you can flip these spawns out. Big Head is big chilling inside the porn. Finally going to be broken by Shady. Moment right now. That was a strong moment right now from the Mustangs, but they're not converting this into time. Tism above. Shuts down CJ on the cross. Drops on down. No Shady's going to be here, but where exactly is he going to be? Still going to peek on out. Finds the kill onto the site, but this is time delayed for the Marauders that Western aren't picking up. CJ going to be back into position up top. Doesn't see Big Head wrapped around the corner, stretching him into this point. CJ's going to get in. Big Head shuts him down. Marauders are playing so good right now in Gavit 2. Yeah, and if I'm Western, if, if we end up losing this map out, and I think even if we don't end up losing this map out, I'd go back and kind of watch back over this VOD a little bit and just kind of keep your eyes on how they're trying to break some of these hills because there are more optimal ways to be able to break into some of these. And they're making their lives a lot harder on themselves than they really need to do at the moment here. Netrix, he's just going to be chilling underneath hill number one as we head back into our second set of rotations. And once again, it will be Western early team inside of this hill, but look who's all surrounding this hill. It looks like McMaster. It's only a matter of time until they're able to break back in. Netrix going to be picked up. Zuzi, we're going to match on the inside. 17-11. Hasn't been 
Falling behind yet into this game. Snaps up, big head. That's huge. Five in a row. Glide bomb now picked up and secured. Now, this is a big moment right now for the Mustangs. Oh, and he finds the sixth as well. So he does get a strafing run as well. And look at where you have the McMaster Marauder spawning right now. They're spawning on that far right-hand side, the south jungle, exactly where you want them spawning for this new hill, because you can just set up inside the hill and just pick these players off spawn one by one as they come off. But McMaster, they win a lot of gunfights through the middle of the map. They can now get it right inside of this new hill, and they can set up for a good amount of time here. And I think they got a full 60 on this the last time through, if I'm correct. Last time, but not this time. I mean, they're set up. So, I mean, they have every chance in the world right now to do it. You yeah, will see Western. They do want to invest the glide bomb in here, but nothing comes from it. CJ and Mojo, they will be able to find two, and now they can start to break their way into the hill. Glide bomb denies them of that 60 seconds, Jesse. Shady trying to work his match here on the top deck. Swapping. Big head for the break. And it's going to be seamless at that one. And Marauders back in. Still 34 seconds. You're looking at Mojo. Leaving the charge here, waiting for the reinforcements from up top. See if they can hit this nice one-two punch. Big head to be cleared out of this. Susie for the break back in. Shady as well. The kills go the way of Western. One last player to deal with on the top deck. It is going to be Schneids who did pick up Zuzi. And in the door frame is actually going to find Shady as well. So big break from Marauders again. Keeps Western away from that scrap time. And in fact, it's going to allow Marauders now to dominate the middle of the map. The big thing here, though, is, yeah, Marauders have middle map, but look at where this new spawn is. You're going up to the south jungle, or sorry, to West Beach for this new map, for for this new hardpoint hill. And now for Western, you have a great setup here. You can absolutely start to gain a lot of time here, but Netrix will invest the glide bomb, should be able to find one. No, CJ will be able to live fortified. through the glide bomb, fortified, keeping this man alive, keeping Western alive here inside of the hill. And now McMaster, they got to push through this, and I mean, they, they might just get shot down every time they try to cross. And George wanted to break that, but CJ said no. I got my teammates back right now. Shady, big 1v1 here. Swaps the second here, but Netrix works himself into a better position. Takes him out. CJ back to the spot to protect. Top, Mojo's shines. still alive. Um, I don't know how Mojo's still alive in here, but his teammates are going big for himself, Jesse. 160 to 201. Could be 180 at the end of things. And look at the setup. Western again are going to be the first ones to another money hill. And player four spawns up on player five. So now they can really start to bring their way back into this game. This Western team, they have zero quit inside of them. They were down so much off the start of this game, but now really starting to heat up in Ooh. this lane. CJ's on five in a row. He'll invest in a glide bomb now as well. Can't get the strafing run, but they are starting to heat up here. And they, they can absolutely keep McMaster off of this hill now and keep them pulling away. And this is where you can start to build a lead up into your favor now for Western. That's that CJ I know, baby. They get a big three piece just like that. A big head working around the outside. Shady's got his number. Another three down for the Marauders. And this is good. Time converted. We're back to a tie game, Jesse. And the shrieks from Zuzi. The strafing run. The shooting pilot. It kills CJ. A team kill is not what you like to see. Nonetheless. The score flip comes through and I, oh i thought a spawn flip came in there as well cj spawned on the other side of the map and if he played that correctly i think he really could have squad spawned all the players of western on top of him as they came off spawn there but not going to be the case mcmaster they sniff out that they had a, a sneaky little guy pushing through their spawn they're able to find them and now mcmaster their whole thought process here is hey you know what there's only 10 seconds left on this screw that let's set up we've seen the la thieves in cdl this season this was the hill where they were just dominant on against every team they played against because they pushed through they set up early. They were able to hold on to it. McMaster looking to do the same thing here in CCL. Zuzi got looking the wrong way. Oh, sneaky beak like, like you hope. Shady good for one. But trade there immediately. 40 seconds. Marauders, they can put it away right here, right now, and take the swing map. Netrix cutting off the rotations through the middle of the map. CS ship in control of Western, but it's going to be hard to cross this gap that Tism is watching. Mojo hops through. Shots are going to be there. Mojo down and out for the count. Big Head's going to take care of that. Only 17 seconds left. And it is going to be the Marauders taking this map number three. CJ finally putting the opening into the hill. Zuzi, the double down, snaps the net strikes. This might be the break that they were looking for. Into the hill they go. Contest is going to be out. And here comes Zuzi. Round the outside. Shady with the help. Break still not there just yet. Finally, Mojo's here to take the cause. And it looks like Western are going to lock things down for a few seconds. Huge two-piece for Mojo. If he can find this third, keeps them alive here in this game. But with only six seconds left needed, McMaster on the hunt. Three down in a row. Netrix will call in the glide bomb as well. Only needing six seconds. They can hop on in. They can get the cutoffs. They can close the game out here. One second left needed. McMaster, they take map number three. They take the 2-1 series lead.
I mean, they know what they need to do. They rotate accordingly. They use that streak from Natrix. They clear the players off from the early rotation that Western did see towards that last hill. And to get the job done just because they have the ability with what they did on that last hill. I mean, that setup, like you said, just like the LE Thieves, near flawless because they push out the hill and then crossing that gap from the ship to that hill five, it's near impossible when you have a player like Dizom just set up where he was. It's all about playing fundamental COD correctly. And McMaster, not only did they outslay in that map, but they also out-rotated, and that's why they were able to come away with it. You saw in the middle of that game, though, Western really started to bring that game back, and what happened? That was where the hills were. Western started to out-rotate McMaster a little bit. They were able to string West Beach, and they were able to string the radar station together one by one. They brought them right back into the game. It was a tie game pretty much heading in towards that final hill. But that's really where you saw McMaster. They said, hey, you know what? We cannot allow these guys to string another hill together here. We need to answer back with a big hold of our own. What do they do? They only set one player towards the old hill. The rest of the three players they set up in the middle of the map. Then you put one inside of the hill, and it just works to perfection for them. They're able to get the big hold. They had all the cutoffs crossed. No chance for Western to be able to break in until, what, the last 10 seconds of the hill? And at that point, McMaster was like, hey, you know what? That's fine. Let's rotate towards hill five. Let's win the game there. I want to take a look at the stats, Jesse. I want to see if we can look at these because Dism... I mean, like, he was the guy to look at at the start. I mean, I think he was 8-0 right off the rip, finding the glide bomb and the, sh the strafing run and using them both just right away just because he can and ending the game off 29-24. and 24. I mean, not flashy numbers when you look at the kill deaths, but it's non-traded kills that I'm looking at. So influential. Same with Netrix with 23 non-traded kills. And the fact that they were able to do this is because those ARs, I McMaster are always finding themselves in great positions. Absolutely. And I think if you want to take a big look at these stats and really narrow down on one thing right now, I know you were talking about the non-traded kills for McMaster, but look how little the non-traded kills were for Western there. 11 for CJ, only 12 for Mojo, and only 11 for Iron Shady as well. They absolutely, the slain is going to become a big, big issue here for Western Hardpoint if they can't pick up these numbers and really find a way to not only rotate, but also turn early rotations into a lot of kills for your team to not allow these teams to break in on you, to get inside of this hardpoint. It's worked so far for you this season, but Big Master, they don't seem to be like any of these teams that you've played so far. You need to find a way to win these maps without just having to rely on rotations. We had a double dose of Bokash. We got our Gava too. Now we head to the Berlin side of things. So a lot of traveling going on, but it seems like we have landed in our end destination. Talk to me a little bit about Berlin. I mean, we now see McMaster winning one hard point and Western winning the early one. So if we're looking at Berlin, I mean, does this favor any side of team? I, th I, I think if I was going to put my money down, I'd... I'd kind of put my money on Marauders for this one because of that systematic play, but... Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I think this absolutely favors McMaster coming into this. I mean, Berlin, we, we talked about it yesterday in our series on Alpha, but when you have maps like Gavutu, Berlin, and Tuscan, those are your three hardpoint maps that are going to be very systematic hardpoint maps. If you rotate early, if you have good gun skill, you're going to spawn the other team out on the other side of the map exactly where you want them spawning so then you can gain a great amount of time. We saw it in Gavutu. Yes, it was still a close game towards the end. McMaster Master, I think they kind of started to fumble the bag towards the end there. I'm not going to lie. But Western, they weren't able to take full advantage. If, if Western won that map, I mean, that would have been really, really bad for the Marauders. But they were able to close it out. If they can take how they started that Gavutu hardpoint and turn it into this hardpoint on Berlin, that's when you're going to see them be able to win this game out. And I mean... As much as I want to say this favors McMaster, you never know. Western, they could absolutely come in. They could take this map as well. If they play how they played in the second half of Gavutu, I mean, who knows? Maybe they might be able to take it. Maybe. And I think if you need to kind of look at certain things, you have to play like you did the back half of Gavutu. Yeah. I mean, Mojo's doing such a good job at playing the objective for Western Esports. It's the Slayers who need to make sure that you're pushing the objective, quite like McMaster were doing on that hill number five. The fact that you're pushing so much space for your objective player to just soak things up freely it's going to be huge especially on a map like berlin where players can slip through unchecked often you need to be on the ball on a map like berlin you can't allow things to flip out like the marauders did at the end there and western if they could do that they might be able to push us to a map five 
It just might be able to. I, I think another big thing that we really haven't even touched on yet with McMaster, when me and you were talking before, was we were kind of looking at their team and trying to figure out, hey, who's going to kind of run into this OBJ role because Seas is no longer on the team? He was that he was the OBJ player for them last year. He played really, really well. And if I'm being completely honest, I think Big Head has done a great job stepping up in the objective role. Yes, that map number one was not the best map. But you know what? It's over now. We can forget about it. We can look at Berlin for the hard point for himself. And this is a map where an SMG Slayer and an SMG Objective player can really shine because there's so many indoor hills where you can gain a lot of time here for your team. Forget about Pokash. It can't hurt you now. It's gone. <laughs> it's in the past. It's now Berlin the cage. <laughs> that we got to look at. Map number four here. This is where the Mustangs looking for that map five, folks. You want your team to get this. Let's see that. Let's hear it. Western fans, where are you? Loud and proud for your squad. Let's head to Berlin now. Map number four, hopping on CJ right away. And I think CJ is going to be the case. Had a slow start that at Gavitu. These look differently, especially breaking from the front. Into this hill already. Marauders with a setup. Is them watching the cross. He's throwing his son out here. Should slow things down. CJ still catches him, but with the kills from the Marauders. If they go in their way, three quick ones. Shady in for the break. Momentarily in. I think momentarily is enough. Able to shake things up quite a bit for Western coming off spawn. And this hill, I mean, the fact that you get good spawns off the rip here for McMaster. I mean, not not only has this team been very, very slay heavy, but like you give them an even bigger advantage by having these good spawns. It's a great opportunity for them. But I mean, a break comes through. CJ's able to find two in the back. Able yes. to break these hills out and back 18 seconds. It should go to the way of Western because I would expect to see a rotation starting to come in from McMaster. Ooh, almost trying to snap on Bighead just like that. I like that from CJ. You know, he gets the job done on one side and he knows not done yet. Gotta go to the other side of the map. Right away to the draw. Now, Shady in the back might be able to pull some squad spawns out here for his team if he plays this right. Dism playing on the wide outside angle. Sneaky beaky like. I like it. I like it. Dism has no clue what's about to happen to him. Shady has his eyes peeled. Where this player finally finds Dism. Oh, <laughs> no, Shady. You can't just let him do that to you. In for the break, though, CJ gets the job done on the inside. Still kills going the way of the Marauders. One last player to take care of, CJ. On the outside, up the stairs, able to find one more, allowing for this break to happen. Flares back on the respawn for Western. Shady is going to take that player out of the hill right now. 39 to 22. Marauders, a small lead at that. Now Shady with the pistol. He's going to find the break. And Mojo is going to put it through. This hill has been pure chaos so far. Neither team really able to get a full setup here until Western has now stabilized these right-hand spawns. And again, it's the, only for the back 15 seconds, but you know what? They will take that time all they can here going in towards the back half of this game. But again, looking at these rotations, it's going to be McMaster early set up towards these new hills. And if they can keep locking these down, eventually you got to think they're going to walk away with a full 60 on one of these hills here. But again, the break comes through. Western, they find two kills on the rotation. Netrix. They haven't gotten the full break yet. But yes, you're not wrong. You got to watch Netrix for sure from behind here. He might just be able to stop the reinforcements. Enough to take down Mojo. Tries to take down Zuzi as well. But it's enough damage so that those players off respawn can get the Western players outside of the hill. Schneid's going to find the last one of the CJ. And it should be a good setup right now. From the Marauders, as you can look at Western trying to break from the upper courtyard. Shady leading the charge on that one. Kills coming through still to the red side. Dism's got to watch the back. Tries to slide on in, but it's Zuzi for two. In for the break. Schneid's to split the difference. Netrix tagging up all the players that he can. Shady, last one in the back. Cleaned up in the pistol. Marauders hold on. 20 seconds left onto this hill as well. This might be the first scrap time that the Marauders are able to get, but Western, it looks like they want to take one more shot at this. Two players, they're going to invest in the scrap time, and CJ wins out on both off screen. so that's another free 10 seconds to the likes of Western. But I think it's really only been scrap time that they've been able to accumulate so far. I mean, they got 10 seconds, 15 off that first hill, a few off that second hill, and now, what, another 10 off that last hill? It's going to leave them right around 50 seconds, so clearly need to be doing a better job on these rotations and maybe not hitting for that scrap time, so just taking the chance and setting up for the new hill, trying to get a full 60 and trying to get a full hold because McMaster I mean if you're splitting every hill 40 20 you're not going to be able to walk away with the game win that's for sure uh, and Shady now has lost two big rotation battles first one on the Dism earlier and the second one just there on Big Head so Western gonna have trouble breaking this from the front here Schneid's watching the rotations to cut them off Zuzi expects it takes him down CJ for the break squick three down Big Head last one in Shady's gonna go down but now they know exactly where he is good for two Big Head's turning up on the hill he should have a glide bomb right now, but five in a row, it doesn't look like that's enough to give him the streak. Uh, game's just teasing him right now. He's going to need to find one more. 
Oh. Still doesn't have the streak. Maybe maybe we're playing at seven now. I, I, maybe, I don't know maybe. what's. Maybe we're playing at seven for just this map here. But you know what, Big Head, he's he's not giving up. He's still looking for these streaks. He's gonna get caught out in the back. Very very unfortunate to not be able to find those. But you know what, the six three from him himself. I mean, you don't expect it from Big Head. He's that OBJ Slayer or that that OBJ role. Not really a Slayer to be completely honest. You know what? Once you get six of them, it's basically like getting a streak on the map because you get a ton of time, and now you've got a 50-second lead here for McMaster. Yes, you do. Natrix working with Schneis. Pinch on the player. Shady, big fight on the rotation. We're going to pick up the office control, and should be good for the rotation for McMaster. However, Western is going to drop right now. Inside the hill, Mojo. Good up, Shy's pistol. Not gonna be jumped on just yet. Finally gets the shots off, but tagged up enough for the scrap time here. Western, you'd love to get this. And Etrix's big nade to keep him off for the time being. Look at McMaster Bro. again, though. Like, just they just a know. Lot to the office. They, they just know what they need to do to win uh, hard points out. They know they need to set up early. They know they need to get these full rotations down and get them on point. It's exactly what we're seeing. We see a 20 point lead come in here. And if they can find a first wipe here and get consistent spawns on the opposing team on Western, this is when you're gonna start to see them pull another lead. But CJ breaks the hill by himself again. Oh, you just can't let that happen. It's the guy you need to turn up though, Jesse. In the week that we saw him have last time around, I think it's Zuzi that you gotta put your eyes on. Has been the main slayer for Western today. 9 and 13. Netrix going to miss the jump up in. Shady's going to be able to collect this time uncontested for a little bit longer. As rotation battle. Schneid's going to drop in. Western, now they have an opening. CJ, if he could have just got up in there, maybe would have been able to have the overview of it. But Marauders now, they flip the lead on out. It's going to be Western in the advantage. 127 and counting for the scrap time. And Marauders now looking to put their all into the rotation. Mustangs down 50 seconds after hill four answer back with their best two hills of the entire day so far they find a ton of time now leading by 30 seconds by 20 seconds sorry as we head in towards our new hill and I mean they, they still have a good presence here they absolutely can lock down some time here inside of this new hill as well Shady's on the back Shady finds streaks too this could absolutely start to swing the pendulum and we can start to see Western pulling away with the lead here Shady breaks on in hits his head on the way might have been a little bit concussed but He's okay with that. Nobody collecting time right now for the Marauders, even though they're finding kills. Trying to convert this into time now. They're going to be there. 34 seconds fight with Zuzi. Even break. Dism has his number with the help of Big Head. Shady around the outside. The lead is closing now ever so slowly. Dism, another one bites the dust. CJ tries to get in, but it's just he doesn't know where to look. It's a game of hide and seek on the inside of this hill number two. And so far, McMaster have been soaking every single drop of Jesse. This is their hill, and they are locking it down. Yeah, McMaster, they want me to eat my words. They heard me saying Western was starting to bring their way back to this game. They say, hey, you know what? We can absolutely fight for this game back to ourselves. And Schneids, he has a big job back here. He needs to not win one, but probably win two gunfights to solidify spawns here for McMaster in the back so they can reinforce the hill. He doesn't expect another player inside here, but he does do enough for the spawns to be now in the favor of McMaster. And I say, you know what, Jesse, no, you're wrong. We're still in this. We're still in the lead. 20 seconds now their way, and Western starting to fall behind once more. CJ, 22 and 20, looking to fish for a few kills, maybe find an opening stun. No information, she is iron, or ion. Find the first Zuzi on the outside, is going to find that Drake's as well. Giant's still locking things down, and Dism gets a spawn in the back, so he's going to shoot Shady in the back line. Zuzi hasn't got his way into the hill yet, Dism doing it all right now to shut things down with Schneid's on the opposite end, slaying down Boulevard, and CJ in the hill, and not for long, Schneid's takes him down. Another situation where Marauders just destroy Western in the uh, this uh, P3. This works out perfectly for McMaster, though. They turn scrap time into initial time as well at the new hill, as they only had two players there to fight off a four-man hit from Western, and they were able to at least contest the back in 20 seconds. They got 10 of their own. They gave 10 back to Western, but they get the full setup once again over here towards this new hill. Shady in the back, though. He will find one. He's going to be a player who you need to watch to disrupt the setup. Schneid's from above. Takes so, out CJ. This deck, he's stunned. Mojo try to catch him. And he does. Miss him, no. So good at range. Shutting these players down as they storm the train station. Shady over the outside angle. He's in the sail. Shines is actually going to burn the glide bomb into this. Try to knock him down before they even get close. He's going to fight CJ as well. Dism takes down two. And Marauders again looking to steamroll this game. 22 seconds. And this could put them so close to finishing the map. 
the great glide bomb. It's basically going to secure you the back 20 seconds there of that hill. You can get to what? Right around 225 seconds once this hill is over. And you still have streaks on another player. I believe it's Netrix who has streaks as well. Dism even has streaks. So everybody is turning up here now for McMaster. Everybody's got streaks on their side. So that one streak coming in, it's not even going to cost you that much there. And in fact, it earns you 20 seconds of guaranteed time. Dism finds six in a row. And now you're seeing the full force of McMaster as they rotate from hills four to five and they continue to lock down more and more time here trying to put it away now yeah, the marauders are doing some marauding right now jesse 28 is netrix gonna hop in this hill full streaks he's gonna use them he has to does he catch him looking the wrong way three down the other way western for break now keeping themselves alive here inside berlin Schneider from above playing top third to a t right now goes in for seconds shots are gonna be good for netrix to finish it up as well nobody inside this hill and it looks like, you know, just a few more seconds and we are going to be going back to another one. But Western, they are going to need another break here. Shady knows that he's going to be going in. Finds Netrix. Shines still killing from top third. He's still making the magic happen from this. And they can still win on this hill. So, you know, Western, they have to get in here. CD is going to get that. Should force that off his hill now. And this is where Western now putting all their marbles into it. Big head for the break. Big head for two. And now five seconds away. Western, they have to put the pedal to the metal. But here come the streaks. The Marauders say no. And they're going to shut this down three to one. And take this series in the hard point. And the only way you shut down CJ breaking into P1 is apparently drop a glide bomb on his head. He finally falls. Otherwise, you know what? We, we might have even seen another three-piece coming from CJ at the very end of that game. That's how we broke the, the, the first hill in the first set of rotations. That's how we broke hill one in the second set of rotations. That time through, they dropped the glide bomb at the very end. They secured the map victory there. And not just the map victory, the series victory. And what very likely could have been a 3-0 victory for McMaster turns into a 3-1 because we see that map one win come through from Western. They were able to close that game out. But one thing that we saw consistently throughout every single map of this series was just the slain potential and the out slain on the likes of McMaster. The gun skill is there. They secure themselves a top three spot now inside of their division, looking and playing that top cut. I have to say, you know, looking back at that game, you used a perfect word for Berlin and Tuscan yesterday. And it's systematic. Fundament the fundamentals are going to shine. And the Marauders, they just know what they need to do to win a hard point. And always being the first ones on the rotation, always setting up Dism and Netrix on their power positions for those ARs to get the job done. Just look at the damage alone. I mean, you got CJ, who played fantastic for Western in that final map. Yes, you go 28 and 30, but you drop 3,100 damage. It's a great game. Shady, you get 29 out of. But Mojo and Zuzi, they need to step it up there. You need to get a consistent four-man effort out of Western, and you just did not see that in any single one of the maps here today. I mean, you get only 2K damage out of those two, and the lowest player on the likes of Western, or on the likes of McMaster, had 2,400 damage. You just, it's not going to work. You're not going to win maps like that. And uh, I mean... A big thing and a big reason as to why they were able to slay out like that is Western had to consistently keep pushing into the hill. The rotations were on point. I think if we look back at the maps and modes and the history of what we saw there, I think the Marauders missed a big opportunity for a 3-0 sweep again to stay perfect in the CCL. That Bokaj, you look back at that, it's like the monster in the closet for this one. They were out slaying the Mustangs the whole time. It, it had to have been by like 20 kills. It, it was crazy, and it was big numbers for their side. And that Bokaj, I mean, moments away from going the way the Marauders, it could have easily been a 3-0 sweep here. Yeah, it really could have. I don't think they're going to harp too badly on it, though, with the way that they came back in that search and destroy as well. Because realistically, after Western won that map number one, it could have been a 2-0 lead. Western could've, threw that map yeah. away for sure. They had a huge lead. They were up, what, 3-0, then they were up 5-3, end up losing out that map. And then McMaster brings it back. And you know what? You never know. Once you get a 2-0 lead there, if McMaster doesn't come back, you, you never know. Western maybe could have closed that one out in three. Momentum is a crazy, crazy thing inside of the CCL, inside of Call of Duty in general. And as soon as McMaster came back in that search and destroy, it really felt like the pendulum swung and McMaster was able to pull away with the series the rest of the way after. Folks, that's going to be it here for your match number two in the CCL Alpha Stream. McMaster Marauders walking away in another Northern battle here. Three to one over the Mustangs in day two of week number two. We're going to head to a break. And when we come back, a little bit of caster musical chairs once more shift and proper to close things out here. You're going to be watching NGIT go up against Rutgers Esports. We'll see you in a bit.